What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit change up here. This is actually Disruptive Inks Studio and this is where I spend most of my days uh, making uh, different websites, uh, UI, UX, making pitch decks, that type of thing. Everything to get a customer up online and market it. But that's beside the point. I bring you here because we have a machine here right over here. This is the uh, Chitty Tech X1 Pro and it is actually replacing the X Plus 3 that we've had here for a while. So over the course of about two months I've been testing this machine and the reason why I brought it here is because this thing does a lot of things just straight out of the box and when you're at work you don't really have time to fiddle around with a little machine and do a lot of the work that the company needed to needed to do in the first place to get the thing up and running. So I guess the fact that it's here and I'm making this video is a already a little bit of a spoiler for the video, isn't it? Either way, what I want to show you today is the cons of the machine, the pros of the machine, just generally give you a uh, closer look about uh, its specs and some of the things that it does well, and just my general experience and opinion after about two months use of this machine. All right, why don't we just get right into it? Let me show you the machine. Let's go. Just start with the outside of the machine and the way it looks. I actually really like it. I actually don't mind the older machine with the white and black plastics, but this looks nice, especially in this area here that we have a little nook uh, set up aside. It just looks nice uh, when you know coming into work. So nothing bad on the outside there as far as aesthetics go. Uh, this is kind of like a funky little door design that they made, but one benefit of it, and it opens without a hinge by the way, or without a handle rather, it does open all the way, which means the door is no longer in your way. So as you can see, if this thing was open like this, it'd be kind of annoying, but that is very nice. Sticking with the theme of the outside, the other thing that you notice right away is the screen. And it's not a horizontal setup, it's a vertical setup. And this little screen has a bunch of little cool features. Like for example, you see the last print that I did. And if you want to repeat it, you just click it and start it, which is cool if you have a bunch of prints that you need to do over and over again. I think that's a nice little feature. Right from this menu, you can uh, set your chamber temperature, your, your heating uh, settings. It's very nice. Um, lots of uh, different ways to open uh, your files, look through everything, it's nice and fast. I actually really, really like this screen and I think the UI on this is amongst the best in the business in my personal opinion. Uh, then when looking right in, we see a couple things. We see that this has a PI sheet. Obviously, a majority of printers comes with this, but it is a 250 by 250 uh, print bed, so kind of a funky size. I almost wish this was a 300 by 300 machine or something similar, but that's okay. One of the th other things that you see in there is actually a poop bucket, uh, which is kind of interesting for a machine that doesn't have multicolor. I did ask Chitty Tech about multicolor, and they said no, not yet, not yet. So I'm not sure if it'll ever be coming to this machine, but it does have a poop bucket and a mechanical uh, piece right here where when the tool head hits this apart uh, this guy comes out and cleans the nozzle repeatedly so it has a little poop chute and a nozzle cleaner and a bunch of filament sensors so I wouldn't be surprised if something is happening at some point but apparently at this point uh, it is not coming right now it has individual and non belted uh, dual uh, Z which is very nice that means it does Z tilt uh, it has a chamber uh, fan right over there for uh, blowing air out in case you want to print with this door uh, closed and you want to do uh, PLA or if you put a filtration system back there. Uh, the tool head looks very similar to what is on the outgoing machines. However, if you can tell, they're spending a lot more time in the cooling department. So there's just a bunch more fins and openings on this thing and it's definitely uh, done well. Outside of that, it is a similar uh, look and feel on the inside to what they currently have with the auxiliary. The heating fan is back there, not the heating fan, but the, the heating element back there. And there is something about that, which I'll cover uh, in the pros and cons area. Then if we swing right over here on uh, to the back slash to the side, we see a side mounted spool holder, which is actually very nice because 
as you can tell, there's very little space back there and getting back there would be really annoying. However, it is really, really flimsy and I'll cover that a little bit later as well. This is where the filament goes and as you can see, it has uh, a little coupler here. So if you're using something like this, uh, where you put your filament in, uh, you can just attach that and the filament goes straight through. So that is also a nice addition uh, onto the back. Uh, also our case uh, top is right over here, but it is completely flush and flat with the top instead of a big bump out like these machines uh, tend to have. And I think that covers uh, the outside here. Let's go around the back one more time. The power button is all the way back here, which is kind of funky. Uh, it's towards the back of the machine. Could be tough to get to depending on your setup. You have your USB for all the space for all your files right over there, or if you don't want to set this thing up on your network. So generally speaking, that is this machine at a glance. However, there's a lot more than meets the eye. So let's go, go ahead and jump into the cons of the machine. All right, so with all of the things that this machine has going for it, there's still a few nitpicks that I have, and that's why I made this cons section. And as always, I say, if you can get through these cons, then the machine is uh, probably for you. And this one doesn't have too many things that are majorly wrong with it. All right, let's just go through the list. This is in no particular order. All right, so the first thing that you notice when using this machine is that it has a super sloppy spool holder. When you put a brand new spool on there, it just shakes all over the place. It's very nice to have one. It's way, way, way better to have that than to not have any of them and to have one on the back of the machine. But I kind of wish they just had an attachment point on the side. Uh, Chitty Tech has this system for their spool holders where they just have like a hole that's pretty much a latch where you can put uh, that actual uh, spool holder. And I wish they kind of just put a, a few of those things around the machine, uh, kind of like in the plastic so that wherever I want the spool, no matter which side, I could just go ahead and hang that there and go from there. But like I said, still an amazing feature to have, but it is really, really floppy and it just, it gives you that user experience that's not very uh, confidence inspiring right off the bat. The power button is in the back in the middle and it makes it hard to press. So as you guys saw in our setup here, this thing's up against the wall. It's not on a table where I can just freely walk around it. And to get to the power button, I gotta reach and pretty much hug the entire machine just to get there. I know that's kind of a nitpick, but like I said, those two things kind of like are the first touches that you have with the machine. And it's just a little bit of annoying, especially if you need to turn the machine off, I kind of just wish the manufacturers uh, put, the, uh, put the power switches somewhere on the sides or on the front for that really quick emergency, this thing needs to power off type of situation, or for just, you know, ease of use. The molded door is slightly hard to open because it has no handle. Uh, they did make this little opening on the bottom right where you kind of use friction on your finger just to pull it aside. Uh, I guess the, the magnets might be just a little bit too strong for that. Uh, and I do really like the door uh, because it is flat on the front and now you can see through it unlike the older machines. Uh, but it, I wish it kind of had like a divot just so that it's a little bit easier to open. I always, it always seems like I have to take one or two tries to get the door open. Like I said, these are all nitpicks, so bear with me. <laughs> the machine has an always on fan. It's not that big of a deal in this big room, especially when there's people working and talking and meetings and that type of thing. It's not a big deal, you can't hear it. But if this thing's on the desk next to you, it is an audible fan. And I kind of just wish that manufacturers just make all those fans turn off when the machine is not in use uh, because the heat sinks should take care of whatever the machine needs in terms of cooling when it is idle and not doing anything else. Uh, and I know this machine runs clipper, so that type of setting with most boards nowadays are very easy to do. I know they're doing it for safety, but I wish there was just another way to do it. And I know it can be done because my Vorons do it that way and they kind of sit idle for days at a time just fine. There is no filtration on the back of this machine. And this is a machine that has a pro in the title and also comes included with a heater element inside. That automatically means that this machine being enclosed and of its nature and the fact that it can print pretty much everything right out of the box means that you're gonna be printing a a ABS, ASA, things that aren't necessarily good for you to breathe in. And uh, I, I have a feeling that more and more companies need to pay more and more attention to this uh, because I think filtration is going to be the next thing, uh, especially because machines can now 
do this right out of the box. They can print these materials right out of the box. They come enclosed. And yes, an enclosure is definitely great, but it has openings, it has a fan on the back. It is a perfect opportunity to have a professional filtration system on the back to keep us all safe as we print our ABS, ASA, polycarbonates, whatever it might be, things that off gas when they get hot. So not only Chitty Tech, this is kind of a message for, I guess, most manufacturers that are getting into the space. Please consider our safety and please consider including some kind of filtration systems on the backs of machines like this. The 250 by 250 is a bit limiting. Uh, I kind of wish this machine kept to the same form factor as the outgoing X plus three. That's the machine that we've had here for a very long time now. We really enjoyed that space between 220 and 300 on the outgoing machine. Uh, but this one is a little bit smaller and it can be limiting to slightly larger things that you want to print. Obviously, you can, you can get around the printing majority of the things that you want with a 250, uh, 250 millimeter uh, print area. But still, I would have loved to see something a little bit bigger, something closer to 300. And hopefully, maybe there is a Q2 Pro coming soon that's a little bit larger. I would definitely be in the market for something like that. Uh, and the last thing I have on the list, like I said, these are mostly nitpicks at this point. The top cover uh, rubs the PTFE tube, or should I say the PTFE tube rubs the top cover. Eventually it is just gonna look really ugly, but I can already see just after, you know, a few hundred hours on the machine, I can see that there's all sorts of markings on the top cover, so that's only going to get worse. Uh, I guess the solution would have been to make it a big bump out, uh, although I do really like the fact that this thing is flat. Just a small nitpick, not that big of a deal, but still it does rub and you know, rubbing PTFE tube onto plastic, eventually something is gonna give. So that's just a little bit of a, uh, a con there. All right, I think that was actually a really short list. Making a cons list for this machine is actually pretty tough. You have to really think about what you don't like about it because it is just pretty damn good. All right, so if you can get through these cons, I think you're gonna really, really like the pros. So let's go ahead and get into those. That rhymed. All right, so as far as the pros go, let's jump right in. So we got the print all materials out of the box pro here. Now, this is a big one. I've tried all kinds of filaments on this thing. Not everything, obviously. I'm not gonna bring every single filament to my office here, but uh, the things that we've needed to print here for ourselves, for the office, for whatever it might have been, this thing has just absolutely killed it. Uh, specifically ABS, ASA, uh, nylon, carbon fiber was fantastic on this machine. It is so impressive to just take something out uh, with, with no setup pretty much, it, throw something in a slicer, select a different filament and just go. I know there's a few machines out there right now, but Chitty Tech has clearly stepped up big time. Uh, and I think this is an improvement in this uh, part of, of, of the machine uh, to what they currently have and it's definitely a step above the majority of other machines that are in not only this price point uh, but also in this genre of machine of machine so huge kudos to that all materials out of the box uh, scenario that this thing brings to our tables this PI sheet I can print without putting glue on it with zero warping zero everything even with the doors open uh, and uh, particularly with ABS ASA uh, nylon I haven't had to put glue on there and that's extremely Extremely impressive for me because I tend to, uh, what I do is uh, before I even print anything on, on, on some of my personal machines is I take a glue, uh, glue stick, I try to evenly put it onto the PEI and then I kind of bake it on at 100 uh, C on the bed for about 10 or so minutes, maybe a little bit longer sometimes just to get that glue on there and it makes that barrier. And it not only helps things stick, but also help, helps things come off. Uh, and this particular uh, PI, whatever they have on there, whatever formulation, has just been incredible. Everything has stuck to it like crazy. I haven't had a single uh, example of any kind of peeling or warping on any of the materials that I've tried so far, and it's really impressive. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe it's just luck, I don't know, but whatever it is, I really like it in this particular machine. That's why I made the pros list. 
This machine has a heated chamber and that definitely sets it apart and it has been setting apart the Chitty Tech machines from other ones. It, that's why it has this pro in the title because you can print materials easier because of the chamber can get heated. It also helps uh, regulate the, the temperature inside. Uh, so it takes a little bit less time to get started. For example, if I'm gonna print on my Voron Trident, I have to hit the bed to 105 or 100 and let it sit for about 15 or so minutes to get that temperature up in there so that when I'm printing my ABS, ASA, nylons, uh, that temperature inside the chamber remains hot and I have no warping. This, you can just come up here, set the chamber to you know 60, 50, whatever it might be for your needs and it's already heating up and it, it's fairly fast. And now we're going from 15, 20 minutes to 10 to eight minutes, and then it maintains that temperature inside. So the heated chamber is actually a major player uh, for this machine, uh, and it is definitely a huge thing. But there is some controversy, I guess you wanna call it, about that heater. Some people have found that the heater itself, uh, the metal on it is actually holding a voltage. So you don't want to be in that machine with that that thing on with any kind of tools. I know that's not really a scenario that's probably likely, at least in my opinion, uh, but if you are working on the machine, testing something, make sure you're careful around that heater with anything metal because it does hold voltage. And one of the things Alan from Man Mandic really has made is uh, this piece right here. I printed this in carbon fiber nylon and I'll have it linked down below. And this is a nice grate that gets attached to the heater uh, to help you avoid getting anything in there, uh, especially if it's accidental or whatever it might be. That way you're not getting anything in there and you are definitely a little bit safer. I definitely appreciate that being brought to light uh, because uh, like I said in the cons, I think safety for machines is going to be more and more uh, important and more and more crucial. And I'd like to see more and more safety measures being taken place. There is actually a grate already on there to protect you from it, but the one that Alan made is definitely finer and will help from not getting anything in there, bits of filament, whatever it might be. Uh, this has a great UI and it's better than most. I would uh, actually claim that this might be one of the best interfaces out there there that tries not to just do you know standard clipper uh, everything is really easy to get to I feel like everything that I need is at my fingertips and that's a huge improvement over the previous machine because I almost refused to use the screens on the previous shitty tech machines because the main screen at the front is an advertisement for the current machine that you're using it even has a photo of the machine so it just this one is way, way, way more useful. And I really like the feature that the last print that I did is right there on the front and ready for me to go. Uh, because like I said, if you're repeating yourself or you're repeating multiple prints, uh, you know, if you got to print a hundred dragons, just as an example, uh, they'll be here and you can come up, put in a different filament, click the button, go, or just click the button and continuously print. It is definitely a really nice feature. And this thing is, is kind of packed with those type of features. I love the UI there. It has a purge bucket and nozzle cleaner to keep things clean inside. Uh, that is definitely a step in the right direction. It does kind of seem flimsy, maybe cumbersome to some degree, but the fact that it's in there and pushing everything in that direction, I definitely really approve. They even included more of those little pads that physically rub the nozzle on this machine. So that's fantastic because that is gonna be a wearable item. But just in general, having the nozzle purge uh, uh, you know, into something that you can remove is so much better than onto the build plate. You might forget that it's doing that or the purge might go wrong and it'll drag filament all over the place. I definitely prefer this method and to have a clean nozzle, especially because it uses the nozzle to probe. Uh, the bed and to do auto Z uh, offset. That is definitely a fantastic thing. I also think it has something to do with multicolor later down the line because that's just a nice feature to have. So we'll figure that out as we go. But for now, that is just there to keep the machine clean. This machine definitely has a pretty solid clipper setup. Uh, it is not only easy to uh, get started with different slicers, uh, but also uh, just has really good macro set up to making this thing just so easy to operate. You don't have to dig around. You don't have to make things custom unless you obviously really want to. It does it all for you. And that's definitely perfect for a lot of people looking for a hands-off experience. And I think this uses Clipper really, really well to its advantage. The clear plastics aren't skewed. 
uh, so you can see through them. So that was actually a major issue that I personally had with the previous machines, where right where the nozzle kind of meets the bed and you want to look at that precious first layer, uh, the uh, acrylic had kind of a fold in it and it was really hard to see through that skewed plastic. Uh, this is flat on the front, you can see everything, and even from the top as well. That was another issue with the outgoing machines is you couldn't even see from the top because it was kind of skewed. So that just makes uh, everyday printing much, much easier on this machine. Uh, it has individual motors for the Z uh, axis, and that is fantastic because that means you can do a Z tilt uh, before uh, the bed. And what that means is it makes the print bed horizontal and, and, and level with the axis axis that the print head is on. So it does that before even uh, doing a mesh on the bed, which means you're going to have a significantly better first layer. And like I said, out of all the different materials, out of all the things that I've printed on this thing, whether it was a small part or a full bed, I haven't had a single problem with either first layer or not sticking or, uh, or peeling, none of that stuff. This thing has just been an outstanding performer and everyone here that's used it is really impressed. The coupler in the back is perfect for a filament dryer. As as you guys saw, I, we use a filament dryer here for, for ABS ASA, this, this area is pretty humid, and having that coupler there just means you can connect it and kind of forget that it's there and the whole system feels together and enclosed. Maybe Chitty Tech will have something official uh, from themselves that has a heating element that kind of continues on with this Print All Materials Pro title. I think that would be cool to see. The door opens all the way. I know these things are little, but that is another major thing. The outgoing machine only opened 90 degrees this one goes a full 180 actually I think it goes further yep that's right it does it does go a little bit further we're just stopped here by our filament dryer and that is good because if it opened 90 like the previous machines walking around here with this clear door that's hard to see uh, you can see how that can be bad you can pop off that plastic and it'll likely break so we like the door opening all the way the tool head design has improved uh, uh, cooling over the outgoing machine and I did mention that and that is actually good because I did have some overheating and cooling issues in general uh, with the previous outgoing model and, and that uh, definitely uh, is going to help with the clogging situation because if the tool head can breathe, the fans inside can cool the tool head itself and that is just better. So definitely seeing all the little improvements, all the things that they learned from their previous machines implemented here is very nice. It has a big metal uh, plate on the bottom instead of just a bar or in, in the case of these older, older machines, nothing there. So this whole thing is kind of metal enclosed in plastic to look a certain way. There's a lot to like about this machine. Not very many cons and a pretty big list of pros if you ask me. All right, let's check out some prints and then let's head to the conclusion. So as far as the prints go, we have been printing on it for a while. Now this isn't all the prints that I have here. We've actually been printing quite a bit. We've also been taking it home, using it for all sorts of stuff. This is just the stuff that I've gathered here for the video. And I did want to mention that they do have some new filament that's really, really cool. This is PLA uh, carbon fiber, but with pigment in it. So this is a burgundy color. They have a few other options. We have a green here. This wasn't printed on this machine, but I wanted to show just how it comes out on a larger scale and the beautiful colors and textures textures uh, that this filament provides. I actually really, really like it. I'm definitely gonna be grabbing some to use. But otherwise, this is regular PLA, some nylons here, some matte filament. So this is a nylon carbon fiber, and this came out like this out of the box, which is just so, so impressive for nylon. I know this isn't like a big piece, but this is gonna be one that's gonna be touching the heater, so this needed to be in the material like this, and this is just fantastic. To be able to push button, not have to do anything, and have something like this is really incredible. And then just a closer look at the textures that you get from this carbon fiber uh, filament is just so, so nice and uh, confidence inspiring uh, with that carbon fiber filament. Uh, this is a print in place model, prints just like this <laughs> out from the machine and it's just incredible, not only design wise, but the fact that a printer can do something like this so easily. There's another one of those models right here and just, it almost looks injection molded to me. Uh, everything moves very easily. The quality is just fantastic. This one isn't necessarily complicated to print, but just looks incredible and very, very happy with the, the way the machine printed that. As far as the benchies go, here's a red one because white, white is hard to see. 
and it is, there's just nothing bad I can really say about it. It prints in about 15, 16 minutes, something along those lines, absolutely perfect. I can't complain. If any of the machines that I made printed something like this, I would be very, very happy. Uh, and that is how it prints a Benchy. Uh, these are all parts here because I printed a few of these full print, full bed area prints. Uh, and these need to all fit together and they fit very, very well, like they're just supposed to do that out of the box, which is just great. So that means uh, that it is calibrated very well without doing much work. So the prints all look really, really well. So let's just jump into the conclusion. All right, so if it wasn't evident already, I really like this machine. I think Chitty Tech improved uh, these, this Q series over the X, uh, outgoing X series in almost every single way. This thing is out of the box, prints everything. It does everything really well. I like the form factor, the price is right, the size is right. There's just a lot to like. So definitely a huge fan of this series. I'm really excited to see where they go. Uh, you know, Definitely check out the con section uh, so you guys get a feel for the things that aren't necessarily uh, the best and then you know the pros for everything that I found great about it. But yeah, it's definitely staying here until something spectacular comes along. But for now, this is a perfect machine to have in this environment and everyone that's used it so far has really, really enjoyed it. All right guys, as always, there's gonna be links down below. They are affiliate links. You guys all know how, that, how those work by now, I'm sure. And also, as always, I did not take any payment for this video. This machine was sent to me early to check out only in exchange for this video to showcase it in whichever way that I like. I didn't have to say anything specific and as you guys saw I start out with the cons right away so yeah if you guys want to support the channel there's lots of ways to do it I have a shop.3dprintsos.com where you can get cool merch uh, we have a patreon uh, where you can get uh, to see videos early as well as a YouTube memberships where you also get to see videos early I also like to ask questions do polls you guys can message me uh, personally there instead of just in general chats so please check those out but you don't have to do any of that. Just watching my videos, throwing me a like and subscribing is all that I need to continue uh, going, growing this channel. And as always, I appreciate that. All right, guys, I think that's all for me today and I'll see you all in the comments later.